the approach to the landing from where we were to embark on the Madu River cruise, there was a display of items recovered from a shipwreck of the 1800s. These items show the variety of goods sent from England in colonial times. There was also an information panel with photos that allowed tourists to better understand the local fauna and wildlife that can be seen whilst on this tour of the Madu River. Madu River is a wonderful place and one of the best for everyone to have a nice gateway. We passed dozens of islets forested with mangroves and we understood the timeless natural rhythms of a rural life. We saw a lot of prawn farming and traditional fishing techniques in action. The river has many enclosures constructed from reeds. These enclosures are full of coconut shells that are soaked in the water for a few weeks in order to soften them down, ready to be woven into coconut matting. Madu River is very rich in biodiversity. It passes through wet zone of Sri Lanka, opening up into the large Madu Lagoon on its way to Indian Ocean. On a small island, we stopped to visit Koth Dua Rajamaha Viharaya, a Buddhist temple and monastery. The temple is 200 years old. We were told that this temple had once sheltered the sacred relic of the Tooth of Buddha. From 2006, Koth Dua has five priests and a few novice monks who study at the temple, offer concise explanations and greet the visitors. They live extremely modest and in precarious conditions. They read their daily prayers together from bamboo leaves books, work around the temple, cook and eat in a small kitchen and sleep in modest rooms. It was a very humble experience for us. In the 14th century, Deva Pathiraya planted on this island 32 sacred buds of Jaya Sri Mahabodhi. In time, the island and the sacred trees passed into neglect until businessman Samson Rajapakse took an interest in the area in 1860. He had the present temple built around the Bodhi tree. In the main hall there is a portrait of Rajapakse. After that the ride took us through some beautiful canals which was a spectacular experience. We saw birds, water monitors and fishermen working hard on the river. We went through a cave of mangroves and passed a lot of small islands, farming enclaves. Monkeys, cormorants, kingfishers, giant squirrels, lizards, hawk eagles, snakes and remote temples. We stopped at Cinnamon Island. The family living in the cinnamon farm demonstrates cinnamon process and some of local industries such as coir manufacture and rope making. The man showed us the process of extracting cinnamon from bark of the tree. Nothing is wasted. In demonstrating the cinnamon process, the farmer showed us how he strips the bark which is used for cinnamon sticks or can be ground into powder. He then scraped the saplings or twigs to collect more cinnamon. These twigs can be used to make delicate decorative fencing and the like. He then went on 
to show us how the leaves are used for roofing and the way they are laid on the roof as we would use slate or tiles. At the end of the demonstration, we had the opportunity to buy some of his handmade products. We also were able to buy some crabs and prawns from some fishermen on the island. We had a look in his beautiful little garden when we saw delicate flowers and admired the simple and serene place. To finish, we were presented with cups of cinnamon tea in fine china teacups. The trip was completed with a visit to the captain's boathouse where we had a nice meal and a coffee to see us on our way.